one quick way to ruin a family vacation is to drive six hours to Wally World with no air conditioning. Now our van's blowing about 85 degrees. Join us today on Tech Garage for our quest for air conditioning. Man, 85 degrees. Welcome to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Well, we got our minivan, kids, family vacation, and we're in Florida. There's one thing missing here, and that's air conditioning. Brian, ma'am, I'm six hours from Wally World, and I'm blowing 85 degrees. Help! That is not gonna work. You know, we've established that AC systems are complex. They've got a low pressure side, a high pressure side, a compressor, and a lot of other governing, governing parts that make that all work properly. But they all require the proper amount of refrigerant. So, in a full diagnostic process, that's our starting point, and that's what we're set up to do here. Wow, and you got the gauges hooked up already. We got a low side reading and a high side reading. Yep. Low side's looking a little bit low, and the high side's looking a little bit low. Brian, if I had to guess, probably low on Freon. Yeah, yeah, and that's definitely, I'll tell you, I'm a step ahead of you because I've gone ahead and put dye into the system and I'll show you more about how to check and use that in just a second. Yeah and you can also use a leak checker. This is just an audible leak checker that actually sniffs the refrigerant. Shut the van off, go around the lines, all around there's AC lines. Remember the refrigerant's heavier than air so it's going to be lower. I like to go underneath the lines, maybe look for a little grime or crud on the lines where the oil's coming out. This will be a good indication too. But I know you got your hands full checking this one. I'm going to get an AC demo set up so we can see how the system works. You get to work. Perfect. So for the dye test, if you're doing this at home, chances are you're not using the fancy dye injector tool that we've got here in the shop. You might use a can. You can get those at any advanced auto parts. It threads on. It puts the right shot, the right amount of dye into your system. Make sure the vehicle's running so you're circulating it. So I've had yeah, a minute or two here where it's been circulating through the system. The other thing that comes with that kit is a UV light. So you can use this to find out. You're going to see how it turns a color. That's what the dye does for you. And you've got to use the right goggles. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. I, of course, wasn't perfect here on the injection. And I spilled a little bit of dye right at the port. There's what we're looking for, kind of a bright green or bright yellow spill on any one of these lines. I can see it all the way back to the firewall. I don't see any more leaking. And I'm going to track and trace these all the way through. Now, keep in mind, if you've got a large SUV or a minivan, there's air conditioning most of the time nowadays at the back of the vehicle. So I'm going to have to track and trace these lines all the way back and see if I can find that mysterious leak. So <laughs> you want to see how the real inside of a system like this works? John's got that. Now, in true Tech Garage fashion, we got a functioning AC system laid out on the board for your viewing pleasure. And not even that, we got some glass tubes so you can see the refrigerant flow. First thing we have to understand is a basic AC cycle, and it all starts right here at the compressor. Now, my compressor is going to pressurize and then pull in the refrigerant. We'll start with the high side. Brian mentioned it earlier. Now, the high side starts right here, and what's happening with the high side is it's compressing the refrigerant. It's coming out a gas, a high-pressure gas, and a very hot one at that. So as it comes around, it's going to come to the front of the car. In the front of the car, you have a condenser, and what happens with that high-pressure gas as it comes into the condenser and then your fans on the front of your car blows it across it and what that does is the heat's going to jump off. It's the law of thermodynamics. It's going to go from heat to place containing less heat. So as it jumps off, the condenser is like your bathroom mirror. It's actually going to rain down. So that high pressure gas then turns into a high pressure liquid. Once that high pressure liquid refrigerant then takes a ride and it goes all the way up to either a orifice tube or it can go to an H block or thermostatic expansion valve. Well, that high and low pressure system is divided right here. We go from a hot, high liquid to a cold, low liquid because the pressure change also changed temperature. And we needed that because we're going to run that liquid now inside of the vehicle up under your dash and we're going to go through what's called an evaporator. Now the evaporator takes that cold liquid in, which is under low pressure now, and it's going to go through here. And when it goes through here, the fan motor inside your car, when you turn it on and you feel that air blowing, it's blowing across that. And what's going to happen, 
air conditioning just takes the heat from inside the car and moves it outside. Well, it's gonna jump on the refrigerant right here. And when it jumps on the refrigerant right here, that liquid once again then boils off and turns into a gas. So what we have now is we have a low pressure gas, which is a little cooler, and it runs back out and it goes to the compressor. And that cycle starts over and over again. Now an AC system does nothing more than take the heat from inside your car in the evaporator and throw it out the outside. Now what Brian's looking for is he's looking for some leaks, and there's a lot of key points to look for leaks. He's got some fittings here on the compressor, he's got some lines, and on a minivan also, you have a whole air conditioning system in the back with an evaporator there. He mentioned he was gonna check that as well. What'd you find, Brian? I'll tell you what, you were exactly right, buddy. At the back of the vehicle, there's an evaporator, and at that evaporator looks to be a pinhole leak. Now I checked all the lines, the full length of it, all the couplings, the UV light, and the goggles made it really easy. Easy, but there's a definite leak on that evaporator at the back of the van. Well, it's at the back of the van, so you know what we'll do? Let's turn the van around so everybody can see what's going on back there, and we need to get to work fixing that evaporator. Hey, you go take a short break. We'll be back with more Tech Garage in a minute as we turn our van around. Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Optima Batteries, powering your passion. Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Evapo Rust, super safe rust remover. And by Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Now, Brian found the leak in the evaporator at the rear of our minivan, and thank God he did. It was hot. But before he disconnects any line, we had to recover the refrigerant. In order to do that, we used our professional machine, and it was so easy. We just took our lines right here. You can see I have a low side and a high side. I put it on the quick disconnect, just like the gauges were. Opened them up, reached over here, hit recycle, it recovered all the refrigerant out of the car. Once it did that, we can go ahead and open up the lines. Now, anytime you do any AC work, you have to get it recovered. So go ahead and just take it down to a shop, have them recover it, and then you can do the work yourself. Also, we're gonna use this machine to evacuate and recharge the system a little bit later once the repair's done. Well, we need to check in with Brian. I don't know if he's lying down back there or actually taking out the evaporator. Hey, have you ever wondered what's behind these big, giant plastic panels? You know, when you're back here vacuuming goldfish and Chex Mix? Well, it's a whole lot of complexity in the case of our Nissan Quest. There's a whole separate AC system back here. There's a heater core back here. And I tell you what, I have two of the three bolts out. There's one more mounting bolt. But here's where I found the leak. Now, you remember, we put that die in the system up front. We ran the vehicle, circulated it through. And here's where I saw the big leak. I hope you can see that. It's kind of a lime green track and trace right there. That's how I know those lines go right back into the evaporator, and that's where I think we have a pinhole leak that's coming down the line right here to our H block. So, one more bolt to get this mounting bracket loose. And that's free. Now, this H block is just a 12 millimeter. And John told you we recovered the system, so we're not going to get any leakage right here. Down here, you can see where the heater core connects. Those are heater lines. Those have antifreeze in them. So we were a little bit proactive there. We put a few rags down in a drip pan. Honestly, not much came out, but I certainly don't want antifreeze back here on the carpet. So the H block has one retaining bolt that passes right through the center. I just about have it out. You see all those electrical connections right there? There's the H block back. These all have to come out too. So work that loose, work this loose. Work this harness loose. And now all of our mounting bolts are loose. Here's a condensation line right here. I'm gonna disconnect it. Now this unit should be free. Get my wires out of the way. Okay, we got this pretty loose and ready to come out. Now you gotta separate the refrigerant lines right here. We got the H block loose. I'm gonna pull them back. And I'm gonna put a rag up on here just so there's no damage done to them in the process. Let me go ahead and work this guy up out of here. There we go. Good, no real antifreeze drip. Next step, we gotta get this guy over to the table so John can help me swap out the evaporator. 
Well, we got our case apart. It was a bit of a challenge. There's a lot of little screws and nooks and crannies, but we just took our time, took them out one at a time, separated it. You can see inside now. We got our heater core located right here. That easily slides out if you have to replace it. I'm gonna put it over here. And then Brian, there it is. There's the evaporator. Yep, I'll tell you what, there's a problem child, or at least part of it right there. There's the UV light. Look at that corrosion. Yeah, it's corrosion on there right there. There's so probably our pinhole leak. There's some more evidence up here. So I need to get this H block off. Well, we'll slide that right out of the case at this point. That's yeah. pretty easy. Got the new evaporator right here, and the cool part is it comes from advance with the new O-rings and everything you need to do the job. So I'm going to take these O-rings for you. I'm going to slide that back into the case. Perfect. And then we'll just put the heater core back in. Make sure you put a little bit of pag oil on here so you lube them up real good. Get that H-block back together. Yep. Now it's just a matter of reversing it, putting everything back in. Use some torque specifications. Make sure everything's solid in there, and then you're good to go. But it's so important that you go ahead now and evacuate the system. You want to get the moisture out of there because moisture causes corrosion. Yep. And that's going to be a problem if you don't. So we want to do that for half an hour up to an hour. Then we'll recharge it to the proper refrigerant rate. Then we'll take a reading, Brian. Catch that reading a little bit later. But I'm hoping this thing's going to be cold because yeah. I'm excited to take the trip to Wally World. Absolutely. It's going to be a cool trip, I promise. That's for sure. Hey, we're going to pull in the RSX Resurrection Project. And you know, it's got an AC problem, but it's pretty evident with that smashed in front. Yeah. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Now that's cool. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Now our project, RSX Resurrections back in the shop. But I got to tell you, it's come a long way. Brian, man, we started out with putting a little horsepower into the brake systems. We put the drilled and slotted rotors on yep. with the new pads. I mean, you know, we started with brake horsepower before we messed with anything else. That was a pretty good choice. Absolutely. And we did some old school power upgrades too. So we started with those fuel injectors that are not only flowing more fuel, they're actually dispensing the fuel properly now in the right pattern. That's for sure. You remember those spray patterns, oh, how yeah. important it was getting it in there? Yep. And then we went right after the suspension system. Remember we put those I-box springs in there, we lowered it, but the key was we used those Monroe struts all the way around all four corners, yep. and I was surprised it rides really, really nice. And it handles well. And you know, we're kind of doing this old school, right? So we're not bolting on superchargers and turbochargers. We put that killer cold air intake on, and then the awesome header and the full exhaust system all the way back, we're flowing a lot more air in, better fuel dispensation, and more air out, definitely power. But we had a problem, we had a clutch issue. So we went ahead and replaced the whole clutch, the master cylinder, the slave cylinder. Man, we got those tires smoking. That led to another issue. Yeah, that was a fun drive. We got that rear caliper smoking, you know. I did the test that you told us to do, where I tried the bleeder valve and that caliper didn't move. I knew we had to replace it all. I'll tell you what, that's a common issue across the board, those mechanical calipers back there with the e-brake built in. Yeah. So that was a good upgrade. And then we turned our attention to the drivetrain. I mean, the drive axles alone. I mean, we went after that because we needed to do drive axles. Bam, ball joints. So now we got not only drive axles, we got our suspension upgraded. I mean, this thing's come a long way, man. It's awesome. It's all but new, but just a little bit more love to get this thing really right. Yeah, and you know, this one's pretty obvious. We're going to tackle the AC yeah. at this point, and we don't need much diagnosis on this one. No, we don't. Take a look right down here. What'd you find? Well, I'll tell you what, right here it looks like there's a lot of corrosion, maybe cracking on the condenser. So I think we probably want to check some refrigerant levels and just see what kind of pressure we might have in here because clearly there's been damage. And it's actually great that this front grill is off so we can get a good look at this. It's almost cheating. It? And I'm going to hook up some gauges just to be safe, but I don't think there's much in this system. And why am I thinking that? Because you see the leak right there? Yeah. And if you look on the gauges right here, they're reading zero. So we're safe to go ahead and start taking it apart. No static pressure at all. We don't need it running for this test. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start getting my side out. And that's a good look, too. You know, static pressure is pretty cool because air conditioning and refrigerant is usually around ambient temperature when the car is off, and the car is off right now. So if you hooked up your gauges and it's 80 degrees, you should see about 80 PSI on both sides of the system. If you didn't, like zero like ours, you know you have no refrigerant whatsoever. I'm going to pop these hoses off and give you a hand, Brian. Okay, looks like there's just two line bolts right here and then two top mounting bolts, so it should come out pretty readily. 
like you about okay, got it Okay, that's there. it. Yep, she's Perfect. loose. Yep. Like I was saying, this thing's like the front line defense here. If you can work yours out, I'll slip yep. mine by the headlight right here. Okay. And then get your grommets. I'm right mine wow. still on there. Is your grommet down there? Yep, I'm good. It stayed. Perfect. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I think we're due for a new condenser. That's for sure. <laughs> here we got a brand new one right here. Brackets on my side. The radiator's not in too good a shape. I haven't had an overheating problem, but hey, we may see that in the we future. We are going to run it pretty hard. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Put your slide in first. Okay, I'm in. All right, tip mine down. This is almost too easy. It's not fair having the front end of the car. You got that right. All right. Set right down in the grommet. In the grommet spot. You good in yours there? Yep. Now, if you're doing this at home, there you go. Look at that. You don't have the help of a buddy. You may want a piece of cardboard here just to protect the backside as you're going in. But yeah, I got a we're actually in good on shape. O-ring for your back one. You Thank you. Yeah, I need that O-ring. Right. Perfect. You got to use these. And I'm going to start on my top bump bolt mount here and then what I'll do is I'll switch down to my o-ring down there make sure you put new o-rings in there you got a little pag oil on these right yep okay all right perfect there you yep. go perfect look at that okay all right and I'll go down here and work on mine get my new o-ring installed and then it's just a matter of you know what we have to do we got to make sure that we evacuate this system yeah at least 30 minutes to an hour man this thing's been open for a while with that broken if you don't evacuate it, you're going to get moisture in the system. It's going to cause corrosion. It could freeze up all kinds of problems. And then we'll just recharge it. We'll look at the specifications, put the charge in there. Yep. Man, we're going to be riding cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be great. It's awesome. All right, I'm going to get mine wrapped up. Hey, fellas, what's up? Hey, Eddie. Eddie, awesome, man. Could have been better timing. Folks, this is Eddie Williams from Williams Paint and Body locally in town. Eddie, we're working on a project, RSX Resurrection, man. Mechanically sound, but the body's a dud. Really excited about the performance, but we need some icing on this cake, man. Well, how about a body kit? Set it down a couple of inches, maybe. Uh, get that door off of there for sure. That's not going to look too good under shiny Sickens paint. And uh, Corvette orange. Nice. Maybe a little carbon fiber custom paint on the front uh, front splitter. Nice. Awesome. Well, we'll work ahead of you. Good. Yep, we got it lowered already. We actually got these panels right here from Advanced Auto Parts, and Advanced Salvage is going to help us out with some of the panels. Question for you, can you get it done in a week? Absolutely. Man, we're going to put the pressure on you and see how it comes it's out. It's going to be a busy we can week. We can handle it. <laughs> sure. All right. Not awesome. a problem. Well, you want to be with us next week because we're going to hold Eddie to his word. <laughs> RSX is going to come back looking like new with Corvette Orange, Brian. Yeah, it is. You know what? I'm going to head over to Bernie's for the Performance Playbook of the Week. Stay with us on Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. You got your work cut out for you, buddy. That's for sure. We can handle it. Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Air Raid Filter, the performance intake company. Steel Rubber Product, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. And by Advanced Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Well, we were talking about air conditioning. The only air conditioning Josh Hart has is 285 mile an hour air flowing over his head. Josh, that stuff looks hot. It is extremely hot. The only air conditioning I have is a little plug in the back of my helmet, which gives me a little bit of fresh air. Tell me a little bit about your safety equipment. Uh, Multi-layer fire suit, Hans device, fire protection on my hands, all, all over my body. And there's also a strap on the helmet. What's that all about? This actually connects my chin uh, height to my lap belt, which prevents uh, a lot of head movement. Now, head movement. I see some padding in there and also a big uh, harness. Did you get violent in there? Uh, tire shake is probably the most violent, and it's like a sledgehammer hitting you in the back of the head in a split second. I bet it is. Now, if you do get into one of them emergency situations, what's your protocol? What actually do you do? Uh, typically, you will cut the mags, which is eliminating the spark, back down the fuel pressure, and throw the chutes or grab the handbrake. And just pray, hey, we're coming to a stop. Absolutely. Hey, Drew's over in the shop, and we talked air conditioning today. He's got some aftermarket air conditioning components that we can install on some performance cars. This is a 55 Chevy that came in, and we are installing a aftermarket air conditioning system in it. New compressor, the dryer, the box, the new controls, 
everything to update your system to a newer style air conditioning. This is all new stuff, 134A is a new refrigerant. It's cooler when you do your conversion. You gotta convert the fittings, you gotta change the dryer, you gotta change the condenser. Just nice, tighter, cleaner, more efficient system and it just disappears, you won't see it anymore. Everything's hidden underneath the dash, nice and clean. We got all the controls. We have your fan motor, you the evaporator. You got your ducts for all your vents that are inside the car. Your heater runs through it. You got your drain tube, everything is built into one box. You can actually get in your old hot rod and throw the air conditioning on, roll up the windows and go cruising. That's where it's at. Check in next week for another performance playbook here at Bernie's. Now let's head back to the shop for the email question of the week. John Jeff from Charlotte, North Carolina emailed us this week with a 2010 Buick Enclave and the AC is blowing warm. Now he hooked the pressure gauges up to it and on the high side, it sometimes shoots as high as 300 PSI. On the low side, down as low as 2 PSI. So where do we start? Well, sounds like a restriction. And with that Buick, you got a TXV or an H-block thermostatic expansion valve system, and these get clogged up quite frequently. And it just goes through here, and if it's not passing through here, those are the readings you're gonna get. Yeah, and if you've got an orifice tube type of system, you can see a clean orifice tube, no problems there, everything's gonna flow. Here's a worn one, look at the difference. That would absolutely cause pressure imbalances in any type of AC system. Yeah, and pressure readings are key. Take a look at this graphic. You can see the top left up there, those are about normal readings. Moving over to the top right, you start creeping high on both sides, usually a restriction of airflow actually going across the condenser. Bottom left-hand side, that's what we had on our van. It was low, low on both sides. We were low on Freon. And then on the right bottom side, that's a good indication of a weak compressor. You got a high low side and a low high side. Yeah, it could get confusing for sure, but take your time. Those gauges tell you the truth. You know, the Quest van was really interesting because back at the back end of that van, it had its own AC system back there. And you might remember, right there is where we found the break in the line. It gets corroded, you hit bumps, those things wear out over time. So we tracked it down. I'll tell you what, I put the gauge in afterwards, we took a reading, that thing was sitting at 40 degrees, it's running cold, I'm gonna have a great trip to Wally World. Happy kids make every trip a great trip. And don't forget, with any AC system, you've gotta have the right type and the right amount of refrigerant so all these parts can do their job. If you wanna check out more about Tech Garage, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and like always, thanks for watching Tech Garage, where we get you back on the road. Keep it cool. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was